University Police are proud to announce that uh, we made an arrest yesterday in our robbery case that occurred on April 1st um, at approximately 1.30 in the morning here on campus. Um, yesterday we uh, developed some information which led us to uh, developing a Quentin Jamal King as the primary suspect in the robbery case. Uh, we went out and uh, with the help of Troy PD, um, Chief Jimmy Ennis and uh, Captain Danny Barron, we were able to locate uh, Quentin King yesterday uh, at Arrowwood Trailer Park and he was placed under arrest. Uh, he has subsequently, subsequently been charged with robbery first degree and he is currently in the Pike County Jail. Um, and I'm going to open it up for questions. This isn't his have. first offense, okay? No, he's well known to the Troy law enforcement community here on campus as well as Troy PD. How do you guys feel about catching uh, this guy so quickly? How do you guys feel about that? Well, it, it's great because, you know, the first thing we want to do is make sure the students on campus are safe. And this, this crime occurred on campus. While we've had a couple of other major instances in the last week or two, um, none of them were directly involved in the campus itself. And this crime happened on campus. So this is great news for the, the students here at Troy. And, and we're real pleased that we were able to solve it so quickly. Um, but uh, again, we just have to thank the, you know, the city of Troy for their, their help in the matter. And uh, I have to thank uh, Detective James Taylor, our investigator here on, at the university. He's, his diligent work and hard work the last couple of uh, days has really paid off in this case. Was I mean, that, how, sorry, you got it. Thank you. Was that his home that he was arrested at? Was he, uh, was no, it was, it was down the street from his home. His, his address uh, is currently listed as 82 Brantley Mobile Home Park, which is just down the street. What, what information led you there? Well, we were looking for a uh, vehicle. We announced that the very first day that we had a vehicle of interest, and uh, we came across that vehicle yesterday, and uh, that's pretty much where I have to leave it right now, but that's what opened the doors and gave us the information we needed when we found that vehicle yesterday. Had you been seeing this guy on campus at all? We had not seen him ourselves. Uh, he had been trans trespassed from campus uh, approximately two years ago uh, after committing some crimes here on campus and charged here locally. And we trespassed him from campus, and we did get word from um, some sources that he was back in, on campus and, and uh, coming here fairly routinely. So we were in the process of looking for him, actively looking for him to see if we could find him and locate him on campus. And we had not found him on campus, but when we did talk to him last night, he did admit that he was on campus quite frequently. How often do you see crimes like this happening at the university? Uh, well, I've been here a year now, and this is the first one. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a rarity here on campus. We have a very safe campus. Uh, our police department is out and about on a daily basis, and we're very um, public with our, with our parents. We're out there in the public every day, and, and that's you know our biggest thing when I came here is I wanted our students to be able to see us and recognize us and, and not be afraid to come to us and feel safe on campus. And I think we've done a good job of that. And this is just a, an isolated incident right now that we've seen, and, and we're glad that we were able to solve it. Obviously, on a campus, um, college, university, it's you know it's troubling for parents and students to have to go through that and see that you, they send their child off to and thinking they'll be safe, but then this happens. So, what would you like to say to to parents and students? Well, first of all. This is a safe campus. Um, our crime rate on campus is extremely low compared to other universities. Um, and this is the first violent offense we've had in over a year on campus. And uh, I want to tell parents it is safe to come here. It's safe to send your children here. And, and you can rest assured by our actions this past week that we're not going to give up on a case, that we're going to uh, keep turning over every leaf and, until we find the, you know, the suspects are involved in these crimes. And, and you know we did it with the stadium tower case we've done it now with the, this robbery case and and every big case that's happened since i've been here we we've, we've solved them now and they just need to know we've got that bulldog mentality and we're not going to quit we're going to fight for the students and we're going to fight for the university and make sure that we bring whoever the perpetrators are to justice and you said that um that he was well known in this area you know he is not his his first um illegal offense but uh, has he been known for anything violent like this before or is this a no everything he's been charged with in the past were property crimes um he was, was charged with some uh, breaking and entering of vehicles and he was also charged with some 
uh, fraudulent use of credit cards um, that were probably stolen in those those cases, um, but nothing violent until now. Um, did you find any weapons on him, any drug paraphernalia on him? Not on, not on his person, no, okay. but uh, we're still um, doing some searching and, and probably be, you know, looking at some other things too. He is currently on probation and his probation officer has been notified and uh, he's aware of what's going on as well. What was he on probation for? The, the B&Es Break, and, okay. uh, and the uh, fraudulent use of credit card. So though you talk to God, does this mean that students need to can put their guard down a little bit more? No, absolutely not. Students still need to you know, go over the same basic things we tell them at freshman orientation. They need to you know, protect themselves, walk in groups, you know, stay in well-lit areas at night, and you know, just be safe and be diligent about your, your personal safety as well. But, but know that the university police are out there and that we are going to search for perpetrators that commit crimes against students. And what's his official charge again? He's charged with robbery first degree. And, and he's currently in the Pike County Jail under a $100,000 bond. Do you expect more charges to be added for, for anything? I know that the investigation's ongoing. I'm it's still ongoing, but uh, right now we don't expect any more charges to be filed. We don't expect anyone else to be charged in this case, but uh, we are still following up um, leads, and we have uh, questioned him and taken a statement from him, so we're going around invest and, you know, and investigating his claims as well. Do you think he took advantage of the situation with the two cases last week to make his move? Maybe thought there would be less of a, an, an attention paid to him? No, I don't think that was necessarily the case. Um, I think uh, he just ba basically saw a crime of opportunity. He saw a student um, who was walking across campus by themselves, and uh, the, the student probably wasn't in the best state of mind at that time as well. It was late in, in the night, and uh, a small guy by himself, and he just he saw an opportunity. And I think he just took it. I just simply think this was a crime of opportunity. But with those cases, um, you know, with the person that's in, that committed those uh, still on the loose, it's obviously still on the forefront of students' minds. Um, how have, how's that case been going on? And um, have you continuously been working with the Troy PD to find that person? We have been. Um, you know, they, they did put out a composite sketch last week, and that's led to a, a few more leads that we're investigating with them and, and trying to help them out. But, you know, that's their case, and I don't want to comment too much on their case. But, you know, now that we've found this robbery suspect and, and we're wrapping up this case, hopefully we'll be able to focus a lot of our efforts on helping Troy PD with their case as well. What's the typical time period between when a case is still active and whenever it turns into a cold case? Uh, it just depends. You know, a, a case doesn't turn cold until we exhausted every lead. And uh, this case was, we still had leads we were working on, so it, it was never in danger of being a cold case anytime soon. Uh, but usually, you know, uh, 30, 45 days on a robbery case, you know, and you may, it may turn into a cold case. But, you know, luckily here at the university, we have such few crimes that occur on campus that, uh, you know, nothing really turns to a cold case. If it's the one outstanding case, that's what we're going to be focusing our efforts on. And this is pretty much the, the one major case that we still had unsolved on campus that so we were not going to stop on this one. We were going to focus all our efforts on it. So did you get a tip from the public leading to this arrest, or was it a tip from a student? No, it was actually uh, uh, a tip from, I guess you would say, law enforcement that helped us find the vehicle. So. What about the, the rape cases? When would that possibly be considered a cold case? You would have to talk to your PD about that one. How have, have the, the extra officers been working out for you guys? Has that been helpful? It has been. Uh, we just started the, you know, the four new officers and, uh, and uh, we're getting them acquainted with the job and, and getting them uh, uh, acclimated, I guess you would say. But uh, it's, it's going to work out nice uh, to have the extra officers. We can already see what it's going to do for the police presence on campus. And so we're really looking forward to them uh, being here with us for a long time. Now, are those officers that are they the ones you guys have pulled from desk duty, or are these completely new officers coming in? To there the are four completely new officers that we've hired on the campus, so that's bumped our force up from about uh, 14 to 18 now. So it's a big difference. Can you uh, reveal what car is being looked for? Uh, Year, make, model? Not at this time. I don't really want to release that right now. Color. <laughs> it was a red vehicle. I tell you, it, was, it, was a, it was a red vehicle that we were looking for, and uh, and I do have to thank uh, Steve Waddell here at the university. Uh, you know, we do have a, an extensive 
video network here on the campus, a camera network that's uh, in place in most of our buildings and some of the outside perimeter as well. And Steve Waddell is our uh, videographer that goes and searches this video for us. And once we told him a crime had been committed, Steve spent countless hours reviewing the video cameras and re reviewing the video feeds and, and actually found the video that uh, led to an arrest in this case. So Steve should be committed as well. Could that video possibly be helpful in the other cases? Maybe see if the guy... Uh, we are using some of our video to try to aid Troy PD with their case as well. And um, we haven't found anything yet that we think is going to be useful, but we're still looking at, and we've, we've got Steve on that job as well. So we're, we're hoping it will be. But uh, we're, we haven't exhausted all of that either, so we're still looking at that as well. And the age of this guy is... 22, 22 years old. Right? 22 years old. Right. And he was not a, a student at campus? He was not a student on campus, no. But frequents the campus. But, I, I mean, there's been a lot of man hours put into not only this, but also the other cases. Talk about how, you know, no matter how tired you are, you guys will continue to search to find these people and make sure justice is served. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, that's, I was joking about it, you know, today that I looked tired when I came in because we've been working um, a lot of overtime the last couple of weeks, you know, trying to help, for, initially trying to help Troy PD uh, with their cases, and then we had this case of our own. So we've been, we've been working a lot of overtime here at the, at the university, and, and, you know, we've got that bulldog mentality here. We're just not going to drop anything. Once we get a, a, a sniff of, you know, a, a lead, we're going to follow it up, and we're going to stay on it, and we're going to try to catch these guys and try to catch them as quickly as we can, and, and we're just really proud that we were able to put a close to this one so fast. Since you sent out that release um, about stock spreading rumors on Facebook, have you seen that kind of been quelched? Or? It appears that it has been. Um, we were getting a lot of calls on a daily basis uh, asking us, you know, is it true there's been another one, is it true? And we were having to tell people, no, it's not true. And since we put out that message, um, it seems like that has pretty much put a stop to it. Uh, we've only maybe got one phone call since then. So, yeah, it really has. And, uh, you know, social media is great for some things, but you know, when it's coming spreading rumors, it's it's terrible for us. And, and we were spending a lot of our manpower hours having to, you know, squelch rumors. And so this has really allowed us to refocus on the case and, and not have to talk to so many parents and, and concerned students. A rape of any nature is, is a terrible thing, but when it happens to a student, um, one of your students, how imperative is it for you to really help try to solve this case? It's very important um, because, you know, our, our student safety is, is priority norm, number one. Um, you know, if, if the students don't feel safe on campus, uh, then parents aren't going to send their students here to come to school, and that's the last thing we want to see is, you know, uh, student population drop because of some crime that occurred in the community. Uh, so we want to make sure that we, we put forth every effort to help Troy PD solve these cases as quickly as possible. So it's very important to us. Uh, you know, we all know that there are no firearms of any kind allowed on campus in, in any way. But is, is there any way to keep any kind of stricter regulation on that so that we don't see events like this armed robbery happening? Uh, well, you know, uh, just a random person bringing a gun on campus, it, you know, there's there's really no way for us to stop it unless we, you know, see them with a gun. So, uh, no, there's really not. But, you know, this guy wasn't a student. You know, we don't believe the students are bringing guns on campus. Um, but it's we have an open campus, and it's very possible for, for folks to get on campus. Uh, but they need to know that if they do uh, bring a gun on campus and, and use that gun, that we're going to prosecute them to the fullest extent of the law. Has the university considered, with the campus being an open campus, possibly making it a closed campus? Um, I don't think so. Uh, that would be something that you know the, the people higher up than me would have to discuss. But uh, I don't think so. I think our campus is still perfectly safe um, without us fencing it in. Um, but you know, if things were to, to escalate, then that would also always be a possibility. But hopefully. Uh, we're able to keep a check on everything and, and hopefully that'll never happen.